You wish to pay $1,600 a month on a 30-year mortgage. If you plan on mortgaging $275,000 after a down payment, find the interest rate that you would need to get from the bank. So here I'm going to write out my monthly payment formula. The monthly payment is equal to M, parentheses, 1 plus R over 12, raised to the 12Y power, times R over 12, all over 1 plus R over 12, raised to the 12Y power, take away 1. And here my variables are M, R, and Y. Well, here they tell you it's a 30-year mortgage. Most mortgages are 30 years, so here our Y value is going to be 30. And the money that you're mortgaging, here the question says you plan on mortgaging $275,000 after a down payment. M is always the value that you get after you subtract the down payment from the price of the house. So here they're telling you that's how much money you want to mortgage. But here the question says find the interest rate you would need to get from the bank. So here our R is going to be our X value. So we're going to plug in our M, 275,000, our Y's, that's going to be 30, and here we're going to go about solving for our R value. But since we have our unknown on the right, that means you need to know what's going on on the left. Here you wish to have a $1,600 monthly payment. So we're going to set up an equation where we're going to have the monthly payment, so that's going to be the $1,600. That equals our M, 275,000, times 1 plus R is going to be X. X over 12 raised to the 12 times 30th power times another R over 12. So it's going to be times, once again, X over 12, because our interest rate is what we're solving for, all over 1 plus r over 12, again r is x, so x over 12, to the 12y power, 12 times 30th power, take away 1. So this is the equation that I want to solve in order to figure out what my r value is going to be. Now in order to solve equations, we're going to do that graphically. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter the left-hand side of the equation into y1, the right-hand side of the equation into y2, and we want to go about finding the point of intersection. So I want to enter in these two expressions into my calculator into y1 and y2. Now when you enter this into your calculator, y1, that's no big deal, that's just 1600. But y2, to get this expression into your calculator, the graphics, especially those of you with the newer versions of the calculator, the graphics don't allow you to see the entire equation entered in. You type in your numerator, and then when you press down, you kind of lose sight of the numerator and you only see the denominator. But just trust and just always double check that you entered in your values correctly. Now what I'm going to do is try to get the point of intersection of these two sides of the equation. And when you do these questions, they're all about getting the viewing window set up correctly. Some questions are easier than others as far as getting the viewing window correct. Now I'm going to start off with my Y's. What do the Y's represent? Well, Y1 is 1600. What is that 1600? It's the money. It's the money that you want to spend. So I'm going to let Y min be zero and Y max be something that's bigger than 1600. So in this case, over 1600, I'm going with 2000 because Y represented the money. Just like this, whole, this entire right-hand side represents the money. It's a big mess, but that's the money. What does X represent? Well, here, what are you trying to solve for? Here, my X is represented the interest rates are. So the X value stands for the interest rate. Now think about how that has to be expressed. The interest rate is always a decimal. So you can't have an interest rate that's negative, so my X min is going to be zero. But my R is always going to be between 0% and 100%. So that's going to be between zero, and if I convert 100% into a regular number, one. 
So I'm going to let my x min be 0 and my x max will be 1, and that means my r value is going to be a decimal between those two values. So let's graph this up with this viewing window and try to find the point of intersection of the left and right hand side of the equation. Now sometimes when you go about graphing these really complicated equations, this entire right hand side of the equation is a big, really complicated expression, a lot of times your calculator will give you a waiting to graph. See it ha actually has my two equations graphed and it's spinning and spinning and spinning like it's thinking. Eventually it'll stop doing that. If it doesn't, press second and then on and then go about re-graphing and retrying to calculate the point of intersection. But here's what my calculator now looks like after about 10-15 seconds of spinning and thinking. It's now giving me the prompt for the first curve, second curve, and guess. And when I press enter three times, here's what my point of intersection turns out to be. 0.0567. Now again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to solve for the interest rate R. So X represented R. So the, here is my interest rate. Now, you always have to convert your percent into a decimal, but if you want to see what this is as a percent, we would do the opposite. We would move the decimal point two places to the right. So this is 5.72%. Normally with percentages, we're going to go to two decimal places. So here you would have to get from the bank a mortgage for 30 years at 5.72% in order to make your payments $1,600 a month if you wanted to mortgage $275,000.